Hi folks, hope you are doing well. Today we are looking at the Moravian text and it's Luke 7 verses 18 to 30. It's a passage which very much focuses on uh, John the Baptist. And we've got four things we're going to look at here. We're going to look at a question, a command, a perspective and a response. Now the question comes from John the Baptist. He asks his disciples to go to Jesus and say, are you the one? Which is intriguing because, you know, John was the one who had baptized Jesus. He'd uh, seen the the dove come on him. He'd heard the father's voice proclaiming who he was. He'd pointed to him and said, behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And and yet now he's 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 full of doubt and he's asking. I I find that very strange. Um, I wonder perhaps if it was because uh, the previous miracles that Jesus had just done, the healing of the centurion's slave in Capernaum, the healing of the dead man in the city of Nain, both would have brought Jesus into contact with people who Jews would normally consider unclean. And he couldn't get his head around why Jesus was breaking the Jewish Jewish religious laws. Or perhaps he had a different concept and thinking Jesus would be somewhat more of a military leader like the uh, m- many of the uh, people's understanding of a Messiah would be who would overthrow the Romans. You know, he talked about him as the one who would baptize with fire, that he would gather the wheat and burn the chaff. You know, this kind of judging uh, fury of a God who's come to liberate the Jews. Maybe, we don't know. But uh, anyway, he sends his disciples and and uh, and Jesus' response is is really simple. He just says, uh, Jesus had been healing lots of people, casting out demons. And he said, go back to John and report what you've seen and heard. Report what you have seen and heard. The blind receive sight, the lame walk, those who have leprosy are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, the good news is proclaimed to the poor. He's making lots of references here to the book of Isaiah and Messianic prophecies. But his, this is the command. The command is, Report what you have seen and heard. And of course, that speaks to our hearts as those who are called to be his Jesus witnesses, his ambassadors. This is our job. It's the simplest job in the world. It's just tell others what we have seen and heard. It's what James and John referred to when they were before the religious authorities in Acts 4 and told to keep silent. They said, we can't stop speaking about what we have seen and heard. So here's a command that we can follow ourselves, report those things to others. And then there's this perspective, and it's a new perspective on greatness. And this crops up in a few occasions in the Gospels. Jesus' upside down kingdom uh, compares the greatness of John the Baptist. And maybe he didn't receive the accolades of greatness in his lifetime. But as a prophet later on, looking back, he'd have had that celebrity prophet status just as the Old Testament prophets did in time. In some ways we could say that John the Baptist is like the final prophet in the old covenant era before Jesus dies and inaugurates the new covenant. But he says those who are least in the kingdom of God, perhaps it's he's referring to those who are about to be born into the kingdom of God, are greater than John the Baptist. And so it's greatness, not on the basis of status or position, like the Pharisees love to have the best seats at the table. Not that kind of greatness, but it's the greatness of who we are as children of God. It's our new identity. Remember in John 15, Jesus says, no longer do I call you servants or slaves. And John would have seen himself very much as a servant. He says, I call you friends. The new covenant calls us into a friendship relationship with God through Jesus, sons and daughters of the living God. That's what makes us great, not human position or achievement. And finally, we we get a response, response from two groups of people. And Jesus always polarizes the response. And we shouldn't be surprised when we come across a polarized response to Jesus. The the, the regular people, including the, the despised tax collectors, they said they loved this teaching and they said they acknowledged this is what verse 29 says they acknowledged that God's ways were right because they've been baptized by John they had humbled themselves into a baptism being baptized by John for the repentance of sins they were saying God's way is right contrast that with the Pharisees where it says they they 
They rejected God's purpose for they themselves had not been baptized by John. They had refused the way of God. They had refused to associate with this practice of being baptized by John. They were above it. And so we have these two contrasting responses, the proud and the humble. Which are we? Are we the proud that says, I'm too important to need God in every area of my life, or maybe I have too much to lose, I, I'm not going to follow God fully, just a little bit of my life? Or are we going to be the humble that say, no, God's purpose for my life, it is the best way. And as a child, as a privileged child, daughter or son of God, I want to seek first his kingdom. I want to be a witness and ambassador. I want to embrace the cross because I know that God's way is best for my life. Which, which way will we choose today? Which, way, which trajectory we will, will we set our life on? I pray it's the way of humility. God bless you.